Hey everybody, I'm David with Bolivar Live, and today we're here at the Bolivar Peninsula Special Utilities District, the water company. You can't see behind us, but we're going to talk to Sheila, which is the new general manager, about this new water tower that's going up, how big it is, and what the cost is or isn't to you. Sheila, thanks for joining us. Good morning. Um, a lot of people don't recognize you or know you. You've been here about six months. What's your position and what do you oversee here at the Water Department? My title is General Manager. My responsibilities are daily oversight over the company, just to make sure that we keep doing things on a daily basis that we're supposed to and make sure we're looking toward the future and planning accordingly for growth. And the future is what we were talking about earlier. Um, let's talk about the water tower first. Okay. Um, it was implemented or Joe got a grant when he was uh, running the operation. Um, and so there's no cost to the public. Correct. Well, there's no cost to, to our ratepayers on the peninsula. The water tower that's going up right now is being paid for through GLO grant money that's being administered by Galveston County. Okay. So it's not, yeah. You, it doesn't, we're not going to see a rate height increase because we're having to build a new water tower is what I'm, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Exactly right. Great. Size wise, you know, Bolivar's growing. Um, in fact, housing's gone crazy and we'll talk about that in a minute down here. But size wise versus the old one, I mean, that blue water tower has been here for generations. We all hated to see it go down, but how much bigger is this new water tower? It's four times bigger. The first tower was 250,000 gallons. The new tower is a million gallons. So what about the tower at Boyd Road? Is it equivalent to that, about the same size? Uh, that one is a half million gallon Half tower. million? Yeah, I believe so. So this one's gonna be double the size of that. Yes. And this one actually is going to look familiar. We're trying to resurrect the same blue paint and, and red lettering so that people who used it as a landmark will Can still, still recognize it. Recognize yeah. it, that's what I'd heard. What kind of time frame uh, do you think when this one, right now they've got the concrete pillar you can see from the pictures um, that we're showing. They've got the center done and then now they're welding the bottom half of the top. Correct. What kind of time frame, when will this be in operation? So the, the welding of the bowl will be completed about the 20th of this month. So just a few or a couple more weeks. More weeks. Um, and then the paint crew is gonna come in. They'll paint the, the tank after which time, I think that's going to take another month, then they'll raise it. The, the tank will be completed and in service or is scheduled to be in service by June of June. Uh, this year. And let me tell you, when they raised, you know, I hit when that other tower was still down on the ground and it dented the side of it, they cut it out, put in a new side, and I was actually staying at Bolivar Peninsula RV Park, or no, Bolivar Yacht Basin RV Park there in one of the last place and we watched them raise that thing up and we're gonna try and set up a time-lapse camera when they do this one if we know about it. But it was neat watching that thing go up and when it got to the top, it was about dinner time I think and you could hear them hitting on it. And then, I don't know what time it was, all of a sudden we heard this bong and I guess it popped into place. It was cocked or something, but it came into place. They welded the top on, and uh, it was it's a great asset to us. Down there at that water tower right now, you're doing some maintenance, I guess. You're on the ground storage tank. On the ground storage yes. tank. Is that just a standard maintenance down there? It is, uh, yes. They're doing sandblasting, and I've seen them run, run, rerun some pipe or something. What about the rest of the system? We're, we've got a new water tower going in here. They've, have they done the other storage tank that's above ground yet on the other end? Yes, they refurbished the, the, the two million gallon tank at Singing Sands, Singing Sands. right next to uh, Highway 87 just last year. Um, and they're doing this one now. They're doing the ground storage tank at Port Bolivar right now, exactly. And we've got a new one here. Exactly. And then um, we just, just flushed or just um, uh, washed out the ground storage tank at High Island South. Okay. Um, just a few months ago, it's in good condition. Had the elevated tank at High Island South inspected, it's in good condition. So we, we've got we've got the tank maintenance on a on a revolving schedule, schedule to make sure we stay on top of it and keep everything in in the best shape we possibly can. Great. 
Um, you and I were talking about growth down here, yes, and uh, you said that you're going through redoing the maps. Explain a little bit about what you're doing and what you're looking at the different areas um, for the future. Okay. We are updating our waterline maps just to make sure that they're as accurate as possible, up to date as possible, and, and once we have all of that in front of us, we're hoping to create a land use plan look at where the vacant lots are, what, what could possibly go in there, what size water lines we need to anticipate. So that when a developer comes to us, we can say this is what has to be there. Right. Um, whether they're installing the line or, or something has to be upgraded. Great. So we're trying to prepare for the future. And that's great down here because we're growing like crazy. Um, like I said, our January numbers uh, were up with last year's, which is telling us we're not losing people. Um, we're holding and gaining some. Let's talk about hurricane season. Right now it's February and really not a lot of people are thinking about it. But for businesses down here, they think about it year round. And y'all have an emergency, excuse me, emergency plan. What are y'all doing this year uh, with the new, new stuff we have to make sure we're ready? And do you have a contingency plan? If there is a hurricane, the steps you're gonna take. I uh, have gone through the emergency response plan and updated it um, as per Senate Bill 3 requirements and, and other state requirements. Um, I've added steps that LNVA, who's our uh, wholesale water provider, mm -hmm. uh, tried to make sure that, that we're in line with, with what they're what? going to be doing. And I am going to be actually holding a tabletop exercise for our company so that we all have a chance to sit down, go through the steps, pretend we're experiencing a hurricane, make sure everyone knows what their jobs are and, and, and evaluate whether or not our plan is complete. You know, right. revise it as necessary. Right. So when there's a hurricane down here, and I'm just going over what we had talked about so everyone knows, y'all fill all the water tanks. We do. Um, to yes. hold everything in, to give it some weight so you don't have to worry about the, the tide and the waves and stuff. Um, you move equipment to High Island. Correct. You know, um, now as far as shutting off water, water shouldn't be shut off to the peninsula 20, 24 hours before a storm hits. At the very least, least, it will be shut off 24 hours so that our people have a chance to get their families right. out of harm's way. Okay. It, there's a good chance it would be shut off more than 24 hours before, but, but almost certainly not not more than 48 hours right before. okay so if you're planning on and that's something y'all can think about a lot of people used to come down here they'd come down the night before uh they were planning on getting out of here they'd spend the night get some stuff together and take it out well if that's within 48 hours one you probably shouldn't be here then um and two just make plans that you may not have water if you are here and depending on what happens during a storm um, it could be a week, two weeks, even longer uh, before we get water back. And so make plans on that if you're coming down here to before the uh, storm comes in or even a tropical storm because right now our beaches I think are real vulnerable and your water line comes down 87 from Winnie. It does. And so we've got a lot of areas that it could be affected. Um, and we all know from the freeze, they're gonna start from one end and work their way back this way. So if you're in Port Bolivar, you're probably gonna be the last one to get water because they have to check everything. So, well, Sheila, thanks for, for joining us this morning and this new water tower we've been looking at. Uh, man, I can't wait to see it get up. You know, it's, you miss a landmark. I used to fish out in the bay and a little bit offshore and we could use water towers. And when you're missing a water tower, it sort of throws your whole fishing game off. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Is there anything else that you want to let people know? And what's a website for the Bolivar Peninsula Special Utilities District? That's it? That's it, yeah. Okay. And if you have any questions, please email them. Um, they'll get back to you and we'll let you know as things progress here on this uh, new water tower that's four times bigger than the old one. Until next time, I'm David with Bolivar Live. Y'all have a great day, great week. Come see us. God bless and bye-bye.